Inger Stevens, a captivating and radiant blonde in Hollywood during the late 1950s and 60s, had the world captivated. With a bright and breathtaking presence, she exuded the cool, classic glamour reminiscent of Grace Kelly on the screen. However, her warm smile and inviting demeanor melted any barriers, making her approachable and endearing to all. She presented a beautiful paradox, combining tenderness with an air of elusiveness, a welcoming nature guarded by a modest charm, leaving audiences thoroughly intrigued. On the silver screen, Eager effortlessly evoked sympathy, making it possible for her to portray the typical bad girl. Her sincerity and nurturing nature shone through in her roles as vulnerable ingenues, often in dire need of protection from the harsh world. As time passed, her characters grew into mature and worldly wise women, shaped by the trials and tribulations of life. Like the beloved Natalie Wood, Inger's beauty and sensuality only grew with age. The fresh-faced charm that initially captivated viewers transformed into a captivating allure, exuding an irresistible smolder. A turning point in her career came with a popular mid-1960s TV sitcom catapulting her to household fame. It seemed Inger's career was destined for even greater heights. In her final film, she delivered a poignant and emotionally charged performance, hinting at the possibility of an Oscar-worthy recognition. In April of 1970, Inger found herself catching the attention of producer Aaron Spelling after starring alongside Burt Reynolds in the TV movie Run, Simon, Run. Their off-screen relationship added a layer of intrigue to the mix. Spelling didn't hesitate to cast her in his upcoming dramatic TV series Zigzag, sets to air that fall. At 35, Inger Stevens appeared to be at the pinnacle of her career, radiating charm and confidence with her megawatt smile. However, beneath that sunny disposition lay a tragic and deeply unhappy soul. Inger's struggles, hidden from the public eye, made her an immensely regrettable Hollywood statistic. Her death sparked a curious fascination, as people realized that the real Inger was far from the halcyon beauty she portrayed on camera. She was an enigma, and the public sought to understand the mysteries of her life. To comprehend the source of Inger's unhappiness, one must go back to her troubled childhood. Born Inger Stenslin in Stockholm on October 18, 1934, she emerged from a broken home, her name a tribute to Inga Bjorg, a Norse princess. Inger was the daughter of Per Gustav, a high school teacher, and Lisbeth Pothoff Stenzlin, who were married six months before Inger's birth. Inger's fascination with acting ignited when she witnessed the enchanting performances of her father in local amateur theater shows. However, her world shattered when, within two years of her birth, her mother abandoned the family for another man, leaving behind Inger and her older brother, Ola. Emotionally scarred and with their father stern and distant, Inger and Ola had only a family maid to provide them with some semblance of care. Eventually, the siblings found refuge with their aunt, the kind-hearted stage actress Karen Stenslin Junker, who lived with her family near Stockholm in Lindigo. Years passed, and Inger's father decided to move to the United States due to the outbreak of World War II. Leaving the children behind, he sought a new life in America eventually marrying an American woman and finding work as a teacher at Columbia University in New York City. In 1944, after being officially divorced from their mother through the mail, Per Stenslin called for his two eldest children to join him in the United States. Inger and Ola embarked on a journey aboard the freighter SS Margaret Johnson, crossing the seas to reach their father's new home. But upon arrival in New Orleans, they found their father absent, too preoccupied with his work. Anxious and alone, they were guided by a Salvation Army man to their new life in New York. A young stranger in a strange land, the young girl felt painfully out of place at her school in New York. Despite her academic excellence, she knew she had to adapt quickly to the English language to blend in. In 1948, her father's teaching position led the family to Manhattan, Kansas, which only intensified her feelings of displacement. The strained relationship with her cold and strict father and stepmother became unbearable, 
and at the tender age of 15, she decided to run away. She sought refuge in Kansas City and took up a job in a burlesque chorus line under the alias K. Palmer, earning $60 a week. Eventually, her father discovered her whereabouts and brought her back home. However, the home environment remained stifling, and as soon as she graduated in 1952, she left for good, maintaining distant ties with her family. Inger embraced her freedom, working menial jobs in town before moving to New York in 1953 to pursue her dreams of acting. Shedding her awkward teenage demeanor, she blossomed into a graceful and stunning young woman, accentuated by her fair Scandinavian features and a charming left-cheek dimple. Her beauty opened doors, and she found early success as a New York model. Inger Stevens grew quickly disenchanted with the empty world of modeling. Determined to pursue acting, she sought the guidance of assertive agent Anthony Soglio for TV representation. He swiftly Americanized her last name and helped her land her first professional job, a Vell detergent commercial, in November 1954. Inger's journey led her to audition for and be accepted into the prestigious actor's studio, rubbing shoulders with legendary names like James Dean, Marlon Brando, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, and Jane Fonda. Embracing her Scandinavian heritage, she found opportunities on stage as a nightclub Corrine, earning $75 a week. Her dedication and talent earned her roles in summer stock productions like Glad Tidings, The Women, O oh Men, O oh Women, and Picnic. On television, she secured significant roles opposite Paul Newman in Goodyear TV Playhouse and Armstrong Circle Theater. A versatile actress, Inger showcased her dramatic prowess as an ingenuine and effortlessly excelled in lighter sitcoms like Jamie and Mr. Peepers. Inger Stevens and her agent, Tony Soglio, found themselves drawn to each other romantically and impulsively tied the knots in Connecticut on July 9, 1955. But it didn't take long for Inger to realize her grave mistake. Tony's extreme jealousy and abusive behavior led to the swift separation of the couple in January 1956. The divorce would only be finalized in August 1958, with Tony receiving 5% of her earnings for the next seven years in the settlement. Undeterred by her struggles, Inger made her Broadway debut on February 22, 1956, as the leading lady in the comedy play Debut. While the play received mixed reviews, Inger's performance was widely acclaimed, except by New York Times critics Brooks Atkinson, who deemed her portrayal high-strung and aggressive. Unfortunately, the play closed after just five performances. Amidst the challenges, Inger found a powerful ally in columnist Luella Parsons, who offered support through her personal and professional setbacks. Despite their separation, Tony Soglio remained hopeful of reuniting with Inger and assisted her in securing a three-month test option contract at 20th Century Fox. While the contract didn't lead to significant success, Inger humorously recalled taking driving lessons on the studio's dime during her time there. She had several close calls, auditioning for major roles in Fox films like O oh Men, O oh Women, Frawling, and The Last Wagon. Unfortunately, the leading lady role in Paramount's The Tin Star went to another actress, Betsy Palmer. Inger's fortunes turned when film producer Sol C. Siegel discovered her in a minor role in the Playhouse 90 presentation of Eloise. Impressed by her talents, he offered her a personal seven-picture contract at Paramount, an enviable opportunity with a weekly rate of $600. Siegel introduced the 22-year-old to the film world, and she made her debut in the MGM family drama Man on Fire, 1957, starring alongside Bing Crosby in a rare dramatic role. Inger Stevens and Mary Fickett made inspiring movie debuts in an important film. Inger, in particular, showed great promise in her first picture. However, just on the second day of the shooting, her life and career were briefly jeopardized when she was rushed to the hospital due to acute appendicitis. The production had to work around her until she could return to the set. During the film's shoot, Inger became involved in an affair with Bing Crosby, who was much older than her. 
Despite the challenges, her talent shown in her second loan-out film, MGM's Cry Terror. Directed by Andrew L. Stone, the tense drama showcased Inger as the picture-perfect wife and mother of James Mason's character. Although the plot was far-fetched, Inger's performance became the emotional core of the film, nearly still in the spotlight. Amidst the intensity of the shoot, a subway chase scene involving Inger and Rod Steiger took a dangerous turn. Filmed in a railway tunnel in Hoboken, New Jersey, carbon monoxide fumes from a defective gasoline generator overcame the actors and crew, leading to hospitalization. Inger, in a critically ill state, required two days in an oxygen tent before making a recovery. Inger Stevens found herself starring in her third film, The Buccaneer, for her contract studio, Paramount. This epic War of 1812 costume drama was a remake of Cecil B. DeMille's classic from 1938, featuring Anthony Quinn and Frederick March as pirate Jean Lafitte. Inger beautifully donned period costumes, portraying Annette, the Louisiana governor's daughter, and Lafitte's paramour. However, Inger's personal life was taking a toll on her well-being. She became involved in yet another affair, this time with the married Harry Belafonte. The strain of her tumultuous relationships caught up with her, leading to a near-fatal suicide attempt. Fortunately, a concerned friend discovered her in time and sought help. Recovering from the dark episode, Inger underwent a period of intense self-examination, focusing on her career and returning to television with determination. Her return proved fruitful, as she starred in memorable episodes, including the famous The Hitchhiker from The Twilight Zone in 1960, where she portrayed a young motorist stalked by a haunting hitchhiker. On TV, Inger also shared touching scenes with Dan Blocker on the first season of Bonanza and appeared in episodes of Route 66, Zane Grey Theater, and a second Twilight Zone installment. Inger Stevens encountered yet another life-threatening experience during her European vacation in June 1961. After visiting her Swedish homeland, she traveled to Rome, Paris, and Lisbon. During her flight's landing in Lisbon, the plane bounced off the runway, its nose gear collapsed, and a fire erupted in the passenger cabin. Inger managed to exit the plane just before it exploded minutes later, narrowly escaping tragedy. Returning to the comedic stage, Inger's talent shone in a Chicago production of The Voice of the Turtle. She then took on the lead role in the New York hits Mary Mary, replacing Barbara Bell Geddes. Her performance earned her the best Broadway reviews of her career. Despite being the top draw of the show, Inger remained compassionate and thoughtful, forming strong bonds with the cast and crew. On television, Inger's popularity soared, capturing the hearts of audiences. She became the beloved pitch woman for Clairol's hair products on the show. It was a joyous and productive time for her, although the busy schedule offered little privacy. However, her film career faced challenges. After declining the female lead in the 1960 film Key Witness, a disagreement with Paramount led her to buy out her contract in an expensive settlement. Inger finally returns to the big screen after a five-year absence, starring in Columbia's hospital drama The New Interns, 1964. Yet, earlier on, she had faced disappointments, losing roles to Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn in The Misfits and Breakfast at Tiffany's, respectfully. She and David Jansen, stars of The Farmer's Daughter and The Fugitive, respectively, won the TV Guide popularity poll as the favorite female and male performer of the year. The sitcom's success relied on the delightful chemistry between the two stars, with a relatively tame comedy approach. Audiences eagerly anticipated the romance between Katie and the congressman, keeping them glued to the show. As a famous TV star, Inger utilized her platform to raise awareness for various humanitarian causes. She sponsored art exhibitions to benefit special needs children, volunteered at health centers, and served as chairman of the California Council for Retarded Children, a cause close to her heart. Her high-profile TV status also rejuvenated her film career, leading to several movies within three years. Determined to break away from her wholesome image, she actively sought roles that highlighted her maturing sensuality. 
Among her films, A Guide for the Married Man, 1967, showcased her comedic talents, offering a refreshing departure from her usual characters with a hidden sadness. Inger Stevens faced pivotal choices in her career, turning down significant roles like Jane Fonda's Oscar-nominated character in They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, and wisely declining the lead in Song of Norway. These decisions ignited her desire to broaden her horizons, contemplating opportunities in directing or screenwriting while devoting herself to outside interests, especially her work with special needs children. In pursuit of her passions, Inger ventured into a decorating and antique business venture, partnering with a friend to create Stevens and Cardini, interiors and design in Hollywood. Amidst her endeavors, she engaged in many movie adventures like The Mask of Sheba, followed by her role in the TV movie Run, Simon Run, alongside Burt Reynolds as a formerly imprisoned Papago Indian. An intense affair with Reynolds sparked during filming, but it fluctuated between hot and cold. Tragically, on the morning of April 30, 1970, Inger Stevens was found lifeless on her kitchen floor. Her cause of death was attributed to acute barbiturate intoxication. Despite the personal tragedy that befell her, Inger's contributions to Hollywood extended far beyond her untimely passing. Rest in peace, Inger Stevens. Goodbye, legend. Goodbye, legend. Goodbye, legend.